Garmin has just taken the existing Instinct 2 series lineup and expanded it. No, no, really, they've actually expanded it. Like, now it's bigger. This is the Garmin Instinct 2X. And you'd be mistaken for thinking the only difference is the size. Because in reality, this is more like a Garmin Instinct 2.5 than it is a Garmin Instinct 2. It includes a number of both new hardware and software features that take it even closer to the Phoenix lineup than ever before. As always, I've been putting this to the test, checking out what works well and not so well across hiking and swimming and biking and running and cycling and virtually everything else in between over the last couple months. So with that, let's just dive straight into it. The very first thing to know is the price. And for once, it's a good thing. The price is actually not changing at all. The price here is 449 US dollars, the same price as the rest of the existing Instinct 2 series. That's pretty notable because in all past cases, the X variant tends to be more expensive than the rest of the series. Garmin has used the X variant on their watch, their Phoenix lineup watches, for years. In the past, there's always been something like the Phoenix 7S for the smallest edition, the Phoenix 7 is a middle one, and then the Phoenix 7X is the largest edition. Now, for the Instinct 2 series, the case sizes aren't as big as the Phoenix series. They're 40, 45, and 50 millimeters. So again, smaller than the 42, 47, and 52 millimeters of the Phoenix 7 series. As such, this watch doesn't feel as big as a Phoenix 7 series watch would because it's, well, it's smaller. It's also lighter as well, making it a little bit more manageable for folks that want some of those higher end features, but don't want the size with it. Speaking of the size, the display here goes up from 0.9 inches to a 1.1 inch display. It is a monochrome display. There's no color on this. It's not a touchscreen display. This is all about battery performance and extra long battery life. And to that end, this solar panel there has increased by 50% over the previous edition. And as such, you're gonna get a heck of a lot longer battery life. You can see the battery chart right here in the screen. These are the official specs. We'll talk about real world uses in just a second as well. Oh, and note that there is an Instinct 2X tactical edition that costs 50 bucks more at 499. That includes a stealth mode, basically some kind of more tactical features, as well as a green backlight option too. Now, the first notable new hardware feature is the flashlight. Uh, you can see it says torch right there. If I go ahead and just simply double tap this, it'll turn on the torch. In this case, it's red because that's what I had configured last. I can just long hold though to change it and go up here to torch. And then you can see there's a red option. And then there's a one level of brightness, two levels, three levels, and four levels of brightness. I can tap this to turn it off. Uh, and if you look at the glass right there, you can see the two white lights as well as the red light. Now the torch is pretty darn bright. It's, it's more than enough to illuminate a room without any problems. Garmin says it's the same flashlight technology you'll find in the Phoenix 7X series, but actually more like the Enduro 2 series, which is a little bit better flashlight than the Phoenix 7X. The difference, however, is that this little beam area here is more narrow, and as such, it'll be more focused in the kind of a broader flashlight of the Enduro 2. And that's again because this case is smaller than the Enduro 2 case. However, I actually find it most useful just like daily mundane sort of tasks, like getting around in the house in the middle of the night, checking on the kids in the middle of the night, using that red light option is great, it's not super bright. I've been traveling a ton lately, so being able to like navigate foreign hotel rooms at three in the morning, that kind of stuff is kind of useful with this as opposed to finding my phone and doing all that kind of jazz. In addition to that, there is also a strobe mode. So if we go back here, you'll see down there in the controls menu, strobe. And these are different strobe settings. I can turn this on right there. You can see there's a blink option. There's a custom option. I can customize that if I want to. There's a blitz option, a beacon, and pulse. And we're back to blink. Uh, in addition, in running mode, you can actually have this time to your running cadence if you'd like as well. That way, you know, other people could see if you're running perhaps on the side of a road or something like that and you don't have a light at night. You should, by the way, but if you don't, and at least people can maybe see that little light there. And then one final illuminating item. If you are finding this video interesting or useful, if you go back to that like button at the bottom there, it really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, the next big ticket hardware item is the addition of multi-band or dual frequency GPS. This is considered kind of like the holy grail of GPS these days. Uh, and it basically increases the accuracy of GPS, especially in harder, more challenging locations. For example, in downtown New York City or up in the mountains underneath cliff overhangs and stuff like that. Uh, and in my testing, it's pretty solid. I'll save all the GPS accuracy for later on in this review, uh, but this is a huge step up over the existing Instinct 2 series units, which do not have that. Note though that this does not have SatIQ. SatIQ is Garmin's satellite technology that will automatically go up to multi-band GPS, which burns more battery life, and then go down to the regular GPS modes when there's no need for that. For example, if I'm out in the middle of like farm roads, you don't need multi-band GPS. It just burns a heck of a lot of battery life for the fun of it. This watch does not have the hardware capable to be able to go ahead and switch between those different modes dynamically. So you kind of have to choose for that particular sport profile which mode you want and the battery implications of that. Now the last hardware change before we dive into all the big software changes is actually a software change dependent on hardware. 
which is the ability to see lux hours. You can actually see it right now on this watch face up at the top there, 139,000 lux hours. Uh, it, I spent most of my day indoors, but went out briefly here, and you can see I got quite a bit of sun from that. I can also tap down there and see the solar intensity as before, but then here I can see the lux hours. Uh, this is not on the existing Instinct 2 series units because there's some hardware differences under the covers that enable them to pull this off. Now, as with other Garmin solar devices, there's basically two types of solar panels on top of this. Uh, the first one is around the outside edges, that kind of like reddish area that you can see there. Uh, that is a 100% photovoltaic level. Now, there's some like technical nuance to that, but just for simplicity's sake, it's capturing 100% of the sun's goodness and converting it into battery power. But then over the rest of the display, there's also a solar panel as well at 10%. So in that case, it's only capturing 10% of the energy, but it's a much bigger panel because it's over the entire thing. And those two things combined give you 50% more solar panel than existing Instinct 2 series units do, which is a pretty big jump up. And again, contributing to that battery life chart that we saw just a second ago. Now, if you see my Garmin Edge series devices using the solar panels on those devices, you'll know that on those devices, it frankly doesn't mean a whole lot. It's like trivial and almost gimmicky. Not quite gimmicky, but like really close to gimmicky. However, on the Instinct series devices, because these have such low power draws, the solar panel is legit realsies. Like it actually, you can go into unlimited mode where you never have to plug this in anymore, depending on your GPS usage. If you're doing multiband GPS, then I promise you, you'll be plugging this in because I've been plugging it in doing multiband GPS. But if you're not doing that, you can go for many, 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 many weeks uh, without ever actually plugging this in. Now, let's look at the biggest software feature on this. And this is something that's gonna remain, according to Garmin, exclusive to the Instinct 2X series, which is the addition of training readiness. A training readiness is Garmin's umbrella, like basically metric for whether or not you are ready to train, exactly as the name implies. And it has a couple of core components underneath it. So if I tap into this right here, you can see my training readiness level is 48, just on the fringe of going up to the next bucket there. And I can go down here and I can see the factors. There's sleep, it's upset about my uh, four hours of sleep last night, uh, but down below that recovery time, I'm full recovered from my last workout. My HRV status is in here uh, and I'm in the balance, but slightly on the lower edge of that, which is kind of understandable. Uh, and then my acute load is low because you know the last couple of days I've been ramping down a little bit of training, trying to get all these reviews out the door. In addition, not shown in here is also your stress history and your sleep history. Uh, Garmin says these widget-like glance sections down here uh, aren't built out for those quite yet as part of one of the factors, but behind the scenes, it is still taking that into account. Now, this is different than something like training status, which you would have seen in the past. If I go back here one more time, or up and down in one direction, you can see training status there. That's where you'd see productive, maintaining, unproductive. Uh, that is more about your training like load and schedule uh, versus training readiness is looking at sort of your life and your training load figuring out should you be doing that next big workout or are you ready to do that next big workout versus training status is more about are the types of workouts you're doing beneficial to ideally your training goals or kind of making you more and more fit. Training readiness was something that was launched about a year ago on the 400 255 and 955 and now we've seen that on virtually all of Garmin's higher end watches from roughly $350 and up the exemptions to that being or the exceptions to that being the Venue 2 series as well as the Instinct 2 series but at least that box has been checked now for the Instinct 2 X, but it does seem really weird to me that given these are all the same price, it's not coming to the Instinct 2. Like I don't, it does not compute in my brain. Now, another new feature coming into the Instinct 2X uh, from those other watches is the morning report. Each morning when you wake up, you'll see basically a good morning message, uh, and it'll show you kind of your summary from last night, your sleep history, for example. Uh, you'll see the upcoming daily workouts, whether it be daily suggested workouts or ones that you've pre-scheduled, uh, as well as the weather and your training readiness level, as well as your HRV status. You can customize what's shown on there. You can get rid of it entirely if you don't want it there, uh, but people tend to like it. I like it. It's just a quick little glance at the day. Now, let me just talk about three areas really quick before we talk about accuracy. I'm going to talk about user interface. I'm going to talk sport modes and navigation. And navigation is a gotcha I want to kind of dive into briefly. Uh, so this is the watch face right here. It is fully customizable. Uh, you can customize the components on it, change different watch faces. Also download third-party watch faces from Garmin's Connect.IQ app store. But if I tap on down here, these are the widget glances. Each one of these we saw earlier on, I can tap into, for example, the weather right now. I can see the weather outside. I can go down and look at the hourly weather, daily weather, uh, the daily trend, and the air quality index. And this is for all these are customizable, so I can rearrange these, I can add and remove ones, add third party ones. Uh, you can see these different ones there, HRV status, sunrise, last sport, steps, 
heart rate. All the data from this, whether it be steps or sleep or any of these things are synced automatically to your phone with the Garmin Connect mobile app. You can see some screenshots right here, some different kind of random things there. Uh, so it's all kind of done behind the scenes using Bluetooth on your phone and Bluetooth in this watch. Next, to go ahead and start a workout, you go back here and tap the upper right hand button. At this point, you can choose one of the sport profiles. Uh, there's tons and tons of sport profiles, and even some new ones here with the Instinct 2X, including obstacle course racing mode, and then coming in a little firmware update will also be a boxing and an MMA sport profile. Uh, those aren't here today, but they will be here soon. Each of these sport profiles can be customized, both with data pages and the data fields within them. You can customize it on the watch itself, or you can customize it using the Garmin Connect mobile app. Once you've chosen a given sport profile, you can tap into that. You'll then see the daily suggested workout for that particular sport profile, in this case, just running or, or cycling. Uh, and this is automatically generated, or it'll pull from anything I've got on my structured calendar. And those are all calendar items that I can put on there from Garmin Connect's app, uh, tons of free training plans and things like that. If I cancel out of that though, I'm down to the timer page here, and now I'm gonna go ahead and start my particular workout. Uh, once I'm out riding or running or hiking or swimming or whatever it may be, you can go ahead and see all this information in real time. And you can also transmit via live track to your friends and family as long as your phone is within range of the watch. It'll send them a link, they can go ahead and see basically your course profile, they can see where you are, they can even see your heart rate and your power numbers and your paces and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, I automatically have my watch send that to my wife every time I start a workout so she can see where I am and vice versa. Now once your workouts are complete, it'll go ahead and show you a summary screen or a bunch of summary screens in fact. And then all the information gets transmitted to the Garmin Connect, the platform, the mobile phone app, all the things. And then from there on any third party apps like Strava, Training Peaks, and whatever else you got connected to your account. Now, if I wanted to follow a course or a route in my workout, I can do that. So I hold this left hand button right there, and I go down into navigation. And then I have a bunch of different options. In my case, you're most likely just gonna use courses, but you could follow a past activity, go to a save location, uh, go to a pair of coordinates. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna go back to courses and I can go down here and load a given course up. So I'm gonna load up one, uh, let's see, here we go. This one right here, this hike I did uh, a couple weeks ago, cracked that open about 24K, so uh, roughly like 17 miles, 15 miles, something like that. And I can look at this course here. I can see the map for the course right here. I can also go down here and look at the elevation plot as well. And you can see that right there. Uh, and if I go back here, I can go ahead and do the course itself. Uh, now this is where the catch is. And because right there you'll see 50 course point max exceeded. 66 course points will not be shown. Remember, this is only a 25K or whatever so it was, uh, hike or run. Uh, so roughly more than half of the course isn't shown. So like it can only do about 12K on this particular hike. Uh, what that means is that it will not give you turn by turn instructions. It will not tell you when to turn. It'll still show you the breadcrumb trail. You can see a picture of that right now on the screen throughout the entire course, uh, but it won't tell you that, hey, you should have turned back there on that trail. It will though go ahead and give you an off course warning after you go by that point for about 50 meters. Now from a practical standpoint, this doesn't usually matter as much to me if I'm hiking because of the fact that generally it's a lot slower movement and you kind of see those trail options coming up uh, versus if I'm cycling, whether it be mountain biking or road biking, having it alert me of the changes to my trail is actually kind of important. Otherwise I'll blow past it and have to go back. It's a, it's a big old mess. Either way, this is absolutely bonkers. The fact that this can't do more than a 12K course in 2023, like what? Garmin's competitors, like soon to and everyone else could have done this 15 years ago on all the devices. And this can't do this on a $400, $500 watch. And Garmin's own other watches can do this, just not the Instinct series. Um, look, this is a software design issue and Garmin needs to fix it. And this has been an issue for years in the Instinct, but as the Instinct has gone from being more like casual outdoorsy to legit training and outdoors tool, this is important. Like, this is also just insane. Anyways, and finally, it's also a disappointment. The good news though, is there are things that are not disappointments, which is the accuracy. Uh, so let's dive into the accuracy first of GPS, heart rate, and elevation. Now looking at this first hike right here, you can see that in most cases, it's pretty much the same. A couple dining tiny differences in the trees and whatnot, and under this cliff here, the Instinct did better than the Amazfit T-Rex Ultra, but by and large across the board, it's pretty much a wash. In fact, the elevation was pretty much exactly the same between all the units, and the battery life, even despite navigation, optical heart rate, and phone connectivity, nailed the actual specifications from Garmin's battery claims. Next, so looking at road cycling down these tight switchbacks, no problems both ascending and descending at speed. And again, the elevation is spot on with a bunch of different units. Even the heart rate actually is pretty good here on the climb. A little minor blip at the beginning, but definitely better than the Amazfit T-Rex Ultra's heart rate while cycling. And again, the battery life, despite connectivity to power meter and a multi-band GPS and all the things turned on is pretty much exactly on spec. Now looking at something a little bit less exciting GPS wise, you can see this run here in Amsterdam, just like looking through the trees and stuff. And it's essentially a wash between the other units, 
really not that exciting. What is exciting though is this heart rate graph. This is crazy. These are really hard 10 by one, uh, basically all out intervals, and it pretty much nails this across the board, like very, very good compared to the Polar H10 chest strap. And then finally looking at open water swim with the Instinct 2X on one wrist and the Amazfit T-Rex Ultra on the other wrist. And at a high level, it looks similar. But once you dive in, you see that the T-Rex Ultra kind of meanders a bit, ultimately adding 500 meters compared to the reference track from a swim buoy. Versus the Instinct 2X is virtually identical to the reference track GPS that's on the buoy behind me. Overall, it's awesome to see the Instinct 2X performance basically match the higher end Garmin GPS watches. Okay, so with that, where do we stand? Well, overall, this is a pretty solid option. If you were looking for an Instinct, but wanted a bigger Instinct, or you wanted the Phoenix flashlight, or you wanted training readiness, and you didn't want to pay for it, now you, you don't have to pay for it. Like the fact that this is the same price is still like mind boggling to me, but I'm not complaining. I'm just like, dang, for once it's a good deal. Uh, and so in this case, this is a good deal. If you're looking at the Instinct series, especially if you're looking at the Instinct 2 and you weren't really sure which one to choose, this isn't that much bigger than most of the other watches you might have chosen anyways. So it's not like one of the bigger X-Series watches normally from the Phoenix lineup that just feels like a much bulkier watch. The addition of the flashlight there is great. I love it. I've loved it on the other watches as well. Just I didn't want the bigger watches. And now I like having it on a smaller watch, mostly for the mundane tasks, more than like, you know, being out in the middle of backcountry and meeting a flashlight. And that then of course gets to the singular downside here, which is the course max point thing. I wouldn't be in backcountry with this watch because I'd been lost a long time ago. If, however, you don't go trekking with stuff and want this watch, it's awesome. Like, it's great for every other use case, and I've got no real problems recommending it at all. With that, thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting and useful, definitely do not forget to whack that like button at the bottom there, or subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. This is a busy week. It's really, really busy. Have a good one.